Okay, Brandon, I'm gonna need some guidance. All right. All right, in today's video, we are going to Baja, Mexico. A couple months ago, my friends and I from Sand Mountain Off-Road decided that we were gonna build an off-road race Jeep to go and race the Baja 1000. The first thing we need to do today is go up to my shop and swap out the rear axle, and then we'll be on our way to Mexico. All right, I haven't told you guys yet, but the race Jeep is coming up here, or is up here, uh, to get the back axle replaced out of it. Apparently on 2011 and up Super Duty axles, the rear housing is like different and you have need different pinion bearings and stuff and you can't get the right gear set that we want, which is 538s. But I have another axle sitting on my axle rack over there um, that will fit in it. We just have to swap it in. Luckily, Rudy's the hoarder of everything Super Duty and is here to save the day. <laughs> yes. Their tire at least fits back there. Cars are tuned to run at full throttle. Yeah, put this little patch in here. It's kind of cute. I saw that. Is that melting? The, the, the no, insulation? That, um, what's it called? Fire. Fire extinguisher, foam stuff. Delicious. Yep. I think if we can get the link mounts under it and get the shock mounts under it, then we can hang it and he can start gearing it. We got Arthur and Chance here. They're taking out the, the old axle right now. And uh, I think we'll be able to swap that axle in today. A day. A day and then maybe a little bit more for gears. Yeah. And then maybe take it driving tomorrow. Can't wait to thrash it. I'm gonna break stuff. I mean, I'm gonna test stuff to the limit. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> All right, so Arthur is just getting the new truss tacked on to the axle. I just got all the pieces cut out for all of the link mounts and shock mounts and stuff like that. We'll get those put on as well and get it painted. It's nighttime now and uh, not a lot has happened since I last talked to you guys. And, but we did get the new axle, all, all the tabs on it, got some paint on it. We just barely pulled the diff out. And now we're gonna pull the axle, the junk axle that doesn't work. Um, we're gonna pull it out and get this other one slid in and see if we got a little bit close. All right, Chancey, get on out of there. Don't really be centered on these. I'm gonna go your way. Wait a little bit. Yeah, right there. Yeah, that will work. So the back axle is in and the car is back on the ground on its own weight. We tied up a bunch of other stuff that needed to be done, but now we're ready to actually like take it for a drive, I guess, or just at least pull it out of the garage.
a good first uh, test drive. Everything seemed to be working. First shakedown run went well. We got it up to like 50, 60, gave her some RPMs, shifted it through its gears, and uh, everything seems pretty good. We're gonna have some button up stuff to do over the next couple days so it can go to shock tuning. I'm being a team player. Everyone is going down to Baja with mustaches. This is uncharted territories. I haven't seen what's under this for like four years. It's been a while. Here we go. Now we're gonna fit in in Baja. All right, Janelle. You hate me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know what to think. There's a lot going on <laughs> there. We have Michael here. It's been a while since we've seen Michael. He saved my bacon back when we were building the derby car in April. He just showed up out of the blue looking for some parts, said he'd stick around for a while, and he helped us finish the car for Three, three days. days. Yeah. yeah. And it was the worst time of his life. And so I invited him to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so vulnerable now. I don't even know what to do with myself. It's a little chilly on the cheeks. But only a little bit because I still got a lot, a lot there. <laughs> I found another pair of glasses, but this is Glamis Sand Dunes. Um, it's absolutely nuts. There's just sand everywhere. And this, the highway just goes right through the middle of it. It's pretty cool. Never been here before, so. I think I'm going to have to make a trip out. <laughs> Just about to cross the border. Um, one of the chase trucks and our crew is already down there. Um, and they, he said he's already been pulled over and they have to pay the cop off. All right, good morning. We made it into Mexico without too many problems and uh, drove, how far did we drive in here last night? Like 200 kilometers? We're, we're pretty deep into Mexico at this point. Hey, look, a quarter. Ah, it's a quarter sand dollar. Get it? <laughs> you guys, you guys. Okay, anyway, I think we're gonna try to make it down to uh, La Paz, right? Down to La Paz, and that's where the start of the race is. And luckily, we're all still together. We just gotta finish taking our tent down a little bit, and then we might go over by the uh, the shore, see what's going on there. Man, every time you set this hermit crab down, it comes out and then goes back in immediately. It's frustrating, I wanna see him walking. Look at that, what's that, Coda? Touch it. No. <laughs> uh, Lick it. It looks like a spider. I don't know. <laughs> it is day two in Mexico, and we were lucky enough last night to sleep right on the beach. And so today it sounds like we're going from here, which I can't remember what it's called, but it's about 200-ish miles into Mexico. We're going all the way down to the tip, down to La Paz. That way tomorrow we can get checked in for the race, get all of our wristbands, everything that we need, and then we'll start pre-running while we're down here. So, it's gonna be a long day of driving again, probably about 14 hours, but we'll see you in La Paz. World's ugliest clam, right there. <laughs> Unbroken, sand dollar. 
I'm excited to see the road conditions. I heard they're terrible, but I don't know. I live for it, I guess. Hopefully, hopefully traveling through like Mexico during the daylight, we'll be able to see more of the area we're going to be racing in. Let's get the road. All right, so I don't really know where we're at. We're in Baja, I know that. Michael's been our guide though. He's the only one that knows guide. Spanish. We're in uh... Oh look, there we go. I think we just came across here. Uh -huh. Are we like in? Yeah, I think we're right around here, roughly. Those are good. Are we... Yeah, yeah. Bueno, muy bueno. I got my prickly pears here. They're, what are they called? Payayas? Papayas? Payayas? No, they're not papayas. They're delicious. I love them. Uh, now I get like authentic Baja ones. Back on the road, heading down to La Paz. We have eight and a half more hours of driving. That's what my map says. Or 673 kilometers. The sticker handout is a serious thing. Next time we come, we're bringing a lot of stickers. Hey, a sticker! Sticker! <laughs> I don't even know how many miles or kilometers it's been, but I know it's been hours. And we're also not going to make it to all the way down to La Paz tonight. Instead, we're going to stop on the side of the road somewhere and go camping. They don't have these in the States, and I don't know what it is. It's very messy. Pretty good. They're uh, creamy orange sponges. <laughs> Picture time. It's actually starting to get more tropical. This is beautiful. Wow. Look at how beautiful. See, this is the part of Mexico I can see myself living in. It's hot still and it doesn't snow, it's great. You gotta have snow. You okay. gotta have snow. You could be the, the, you could be the snowbird, but yeah. the reverse. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One, two, three. Want a coconut? Heck yeah. Here's the thing about coconuts, they're not actually good. Does it taste like the coconut water you get out of the box? It's better. Because that you get is a herpes oh. truck. I think it's from all the years my mom made me drink coconut water. Wait, I don't want this. <laughs> it's yours, Michael. It's yours. <laughs> he doesn't want the coconut. What are you doing there, my guy? All right, so we got to La Paz. This is the start. We just barely passed the starting line, actually, but I, I didn't want to turn the camera on because it was a little hectic um, driving this big of a truck through there. But we're about 10 minutes out from where we're going to be staying. Staying up there on that castle, in that castle up the hill. It's pretty cool. Mexico's not too bad. I mean, I just gotta relax the whole time. Just let the boys do their work and I just sit on the beach or sit up in the condo just watching the ocean. I got my nails painted. It's not too bad. Glad I came. 
Don't get me wrong though, this is getting me really excited for racing. And Rudy and I have already talked, we've kind of made plans for racing in the future. Rudy, of course, is going to race, we already know that, but there's a chance in the next couple years that I might be racing too. So, pretty stoked for that. Today, for the most part, is check-in day. Um, we all have to go get checked in for the race. We'll get our wristbands and everything, and then it's just touch up for the Jeep. We're gonna go get checked in as a driver for the Baja 1000. This is awesome. This is crazy. Never thought I'd be doing this, and six months ago, decided I would. We're registered, it's official. We got the wristbands on, we got the bottles that are not complimentary. We're all set to race. We just have to finish up some things on the Jeep. So far, just everyone's been super nice. Like today at registration, we walk in, like everyone you see is just like, hey, good luck. Like, what are you racing? Like, just good luck, you know? I mean, yes, it's a competition, but it really seems like it's more competition like for yourself, which is the best because like everyone just wants everyone to succeed. Like we're just here to have fun and it's gonna be a fun time. Today's mission in La Paz is find stickers and go grocery shopping. Um, we need stickers because the, the kids like love, love them. So like we pass them out of the windows and stuff and it's, it's great. And then we need to go to the store because we need to eat food. We're, we're gonna go explore a little bit though, instead of doing the yucky work stuff. It's not yucky. There's still some things that we need to do to the race Jeep, uh, like wire in a GPS and, and stuff. Important mm. stuff. Important. Very important stuff. There's plenty of people here that, uh, that know how to do that stuff and are back at the house. I don't know if they're doing it, but... So that was the starting line for the Baja 1000 this year. It's pretty cool. Red-headed mustaches in Mexico getting gas. Finishing up the race Jeep in this parking garage here and uh, just trying to figure out some of the Switch Pro stuff right now. Trying to add, what are we trying to add? I think locker, front air locker and air compressor. Still haven't had like a good taco yet. I can't find one. I haven't looked very hard, but you know. This is comfortable. Just don't take pain on the I looks really uncomfortable. Why, why do you keep slamming on the brakes? <laughs> <laughs> it's for soaking. 
All right, good morning. We are down here at our parking pit, I guess. Um, we have the race jeep here. We just need to go get it tech inspected uh, down in La Paz. We're taking the scooters and it's gonna be fun. Bob and we, Bob and we, Michael. Last time we did that, we got yelled at by a police, but it, it was in Spanish. So I, I don't know what they were saying. Arthur, Arthur, tell me about this amazing truck. Uh, California, stay in the USA. Yeah, we're coming from Utah. Me and my buddies built this Jeep over the last six months, uh, just kind of after hours after work. And this is our first time down here, first time racing, first time for the Jeep. So it's all new for us. Just going in, kind of winging it. We're lining it yeah. up. There's four tool kits, and then these are our first aid. We have, okay. we have like a bunch of 72 hour batteries. Everybody's got a 72 We have water and all that stuff. If there is something that you need, guys, actually, we're going to be here and okay. you have already the copy. Okay. You can replace the sticker if you Have fun, guys. Thank you. <laughs> This sticker, I don't know what it means, but it means good things. This sticker means good things, and this sticker means good things. So uh, I think we just have to get our equipment checked to make sure that safety is up to standard, and, uh, and then we'll be ready to race, but that's it. Viva La Paz! Viva Mexico! Taking a break by the ocean. This is where tech is, and that is our view. It's a real pina colada. All right, we passed tech. We got all of our gear through. The race car was good. We just had to cover up one of the lights. Now we gotta go get the stickers that we ordered yesterday from a guy here. And uh, yeah, just kind of see, see what's up. Start handing those stickers out. So I'm following the Google Maps, and I don't think this is the way. This is how you end up on Matt's off-road recovery, by the way. I've seen all the parts of Mexico. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And if someone hands you a napkin and asks for money, don't do it because you're gonna get illegal stuff. <laughs> Alex, We needed more stickers. So I looked it up on Google Maps. I just looked up sticker shop. I didn't know how it would be. <laughs> But we figured it out, and uh, we, we came yesterday and said the stickers would be done today. So, here we are. Stickers. Done. The handout. Oh, 
the case of like, no. say you shut the new valve and this all like goes shut away. It. Not all the race teams have four drivers and co-pilots. Some of them do it all one driver, and that's called Iron Manning, and it's insane. Some people have only two drivers and co-drivers, and sometimes they, they'll uh, alternate drivers throughout the course to try to get a fresh driver in. Since our team is still fresh and we're trying to get everyone like in the car and gain experience racing, uh, we figured four would be the best number to do that, so. And we have, uh, I think we have the crew to do it. See how far we make it. I'm Tim Levitt and I'm racing this year's first leg of the Baja 1000. I'm Brendan O'Byrne. I'm co-driving the first leg of the Baja 1000. How much experience do you guys have? Zero. Zero, zero experience. We gotta start somewhere. <laughs> so mm -hmm. here we are. It's gonna be a long day, but I think we'll, we'll get it done. So to be on track, you've got to average 26.6 or seven miles an hour over the course of the 1300 miles or 50 hours. Martha Smith, I'm gonna be driving the second leg of the 2023 Baja 1000 Peninsula Run. My name's Travis Turner. I am Arthur's co-driver. So this is kind of a special race this year. This is the first time they've ever done it backwards and they very rarely do it with this much mileage. So we built the Jeep in the last six months. I've never done anything like this chasing a GPS file per se but I grew up racing uh, Utah desert racing on dirt bikes. So as far as, I don't know what their course markings are like, but I've been in similar scenarios, but following just pink ribbon instead of GPS files. I'm Chance Fehrenbacher. I am the third driver of this year's Baja 1000. I'm Dakota Ha, and I'm Chance's co-driver. I've been following off-road racing my whole life. I wanted to race Baja since I was a little kid. Odds are against you when you're out here. I know enough about off-road racing to know that. So it's just slow and steady wins this race. And as long as as long as everybody keeps that in mind, we keep this car intact. I think if, if this car can make it to me, I think that that's enough um, hard miles on that thing to know that it's capable to make it the rest of the way. Arthur and Chance and Tim said they got a Jeep and they were gonna go race it in the Baja 1000. They said, come with us. I said, oh, I don't know, sounds crazy, but here I am. Thank you for everybody, to everyone that's helped this come a thing. And we worked really hard the last year building this Jeep. You know, it's, we, don't, we don't do this for a living. We, we do this after work. So you work your 40 hour a week and you put in more time to build this race car and build this team. So my name's Rudy Wetzel and I'm racing the fourth leg of this year's Baja 1000. I'm Patrick Haas. I'm riding with Rudy for the fourth leg of the Baja 1000 as his co-pilot. So the other guys are going to be racing almost a thousand miles before it gets to us. Probably over a thousand miles. Yeah. Do you think it. we're going to get a chance to drive? We got a lot of tools and a lot of spare parts to make sure. Yeah. I really like to get in the race car after the whole drive down here. <laughs> ah, it was a couple days. It was brutal. We get one of the whoopiest parts of the course out of San Felipe, and then the most mountainous section of the course. It's not the most rugged terrain out of the course. The whole terrain, or the whole course is horrible, but uh, we get some, definitely some of the worst. You're good now. It is race day. The race car is coming soon. I don't think it's left the start line yet, but we're here at our first turn, not the pit, the first hard turn onto dirt out of uh, La Paz. There's helicopters going everywhere. Traffic is flowing heavy. I got, I got Michael and Patrick with me. First turn of the race. I hope it makes it. We're just gonna, it's just gonna go straight. Like we're, 
<laughs> Turn those steering wheels are gonna break <laughs> off. She's blessing us. Blessing you. You. Oh, I'm without blessing. Oh, I give my blessing to you. No, I want you to have it. We'll split it down the middle. All right. If we die, we die, right? Yeah. Well, we're gonna die. We just don't. Do not today. How you feel, man? I'm nervous. We got this. This is nothing. All right. Honestly, just slow know. and easy, right? That's all we gotta do. Yep. Here we go, here we go. Okay, Brandon, I'm gonna need some guidance. All right. In point five, we're going to slow down to 37. And it's gonna be a right turn. Not a hard right. Yeah, it's looking all right. Everything's looking good. We still got about 1.4 miles to get to the 60 mile per hour zone. Four hundred feet. All right, we're saying we're going to go to 60. <laughs> So we're running a little hot. Oh yeah, what's up with the heat? Oh yeah, look at that. Our fans aren't kicking on. If it hits 240, we gotta pull over, right? Yeah, we're getting ready to pull over here. So we are down at mile 11. This is where they're supposed to turn off of the main highway onto the dirt, but Apparently, back about a couple miles, um, they started overheating pretty good, got up to temps above like 250, so they pulled over. So the guy's headed down with the mule with some parts, hopefully they can get the fans back running. Keeps blowing fan fuses. So we slowed the fan way down and hopefully it'll work. Luckily we got a fancy brushless variable speed fan. So hopefully it's enough. No bueno. Not good. You want me to run into town and find some bigger fuses? Circuit breaker. Circuit breaker? You can find like a 60 Yeah. Yeah, 50 to 60. Yeah, I'll just run back into like where yeah. Walmart is. Yeah. Get up the next bit. Okay. Yeah. No. Get up, get whatever they need. So we're running back into town to go get um, some bigger fuses for the fan relay. Patrick turned down the fan so that it's only working at 25%, so it shouldn't need the big fuse. Um, it might run a little warm. The next pit, if I find the right fuses, that means we can put the right fuse in and then crank the fan back up and go full bore. It's a little crazy. And the transmission was leaking stuff. Okay, we clear in the back? Clear. Hey! Okay, Sam. We'll spot you out. Go, go, go. Remember, 60 miles per hour. All right, we're going to come up here on the left-hand turn right after this. Right, the next street. Go right here, the next, right here. Where at? Right there, right there. Sorry, man. Getting used to it. No, you're good. And 
Chestnut, and it's 37th of year. How far are we going on this? About 1.2 miles. Slow down on there, you got people on your right. Take their time. Two twenty seven. Watch out here on the right. Be good on the right. Over in that 227, that's all right. Yeah, not raising. Yeah. Doing good, man. You want to send them a message, let them know it's still overheating? Yes, sir. There's a main road coming over here on your, in about, what you think we'd be able to get to us from this main road? I think so. It's a VCP. It's a, it's Virgil Checkpoint 1 actually. Okay, we gotta let it cool off. Yep. We might have to crawl for a while, bro. It seems like it's cooling down with crawling. Yeah. Watch out for that tire on the old road. Got it. Uh, BCP3 we're coming up on. It's going to be a, a hard right at T. We're at 238. Yeah. Not looking good, my friend. It's not looking good. What's the next main road that we could get to? We might be able to make it uh, to VCP uh, 6. And right after that, there's this uh, connecting road to the main Mexican one. Mexican one. We got to let it cool. Yeah, it's 240. CP6, and then we gotta go a little further than that, and that's where that road is off to the right. We gotta cool off. Yeah, we're good anyway. These guys are all stuck up here. Do you have a 50 amp fuse? 
50 amp fuse? I don't have a 50 amp. Can you guide me up here? Good, good. Oh yeah. Made it, brother. Nice. There should be a road up here on the right uh, that connects to the main road within about a few hundred feet. Yo la pedí, son corredores, ellos son los que vienen corriendo. Son los que vienen corriendo. ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? Hey, we're in between BCP6 and BCP7. There's a, a road that connects fr from Mexican 1 to over to the trail. That's where exactly where we're at. We're at the head of that, that uh, road. Uh, we're, on the we're on the trail still. Uh, it's overheating. We can't go any further. So, like It keeps us overheating like crazy. So this is the only place to fix, to fix it. Hey, they, they said they're at the crossing at 27. Yeah, that's right before VCP8. That's about five miles away. Great. Here we are, a race mile, like 25. Uh, fixing the Jeep again. Uh, same issue, just things, man. You don't think I can, I can cross it efficiently? Well, we need one good mechanic. Do you have a 50 amp fuse? I have no. a pocket full of 40s. They had 40. They had a 40. That was it. Did it blow again? Wait, you put a 40 in it? No, no, no. They only had a 40. Oh. They were going to give us a four, uh, uh, some fuses. Okay. Is it bottle? hit the kill switch when you're going around a corner it bumped and it turned it off so it ripped the steering wheel out of my hands i've already got a broken hand as you can tell yeah hasta la vista baby well well that was a day huh <laughs> mile 27 Damn. That's a marathon right there. We're getting hot again. Yeah, watch out. I bet you blew that. I bet you blew that fuse. That's our fan, isn't it? I think, I, I think that's the fan up there. Get out and check. It wasn't doing it when it was lowered down. I bet it's drawing too much power through these. I mean, these uh, fuses. Yeah. It's the only way to do it. It'd be. Yeah, it's just like that. Yeah, we're getting hot again. Yeah, We may be making a mile up the road. You did top off the water? Yeah. yeah. How much did we spend? Almost a gallon. Really? Maybe not quite a gallon, but it was more than it should have been. 
That's really good. Grab. Oh, stop doing that. Will we'll be able to make it to, to the place where we can get it fixed? I think so. I think this will... Cross your fingers, this could last the rest of the race. Ideally, not breaking down in the first 20 miles is nice. But if it doesn't overheat again, I think we can make it. So we did a driver swap there. Uh, we put Travis in um, with Brandon, and uh, Travis is the co-driver for Arthur, which is the next next leg. So we'll see how that goes. He's a, he's a really good driver that has a lot of experience. Um, but we're gonna bomb down and try to meet them at the next spot that uh, we can get into um, before the pit. Um, and hopefully they drive on by and give us the thumbs up and or are already gone. Gonna be coming up on the left here, yep. And uh, coming up here, sharp right, okay. All right, little windy, that's it. So we're climbing up on 220 again, take a T, take a left, okay. Yep, hard left, I think we'll pick you. Okay. And then you're going to be cutting and going back to your uh, right hand, same way, U shape. Okay. Watch up here, watch crossing, then an uphill. Okay, that's in about, about half a mile. Okay, we're gonna be a highway crossing also here coming up. Pretty straight all the way through here. All right, there's a danger. This is the crossing up here. So, sorry, seven. Uh, it does not say, it just says it's just a danger of crossing. So we just gotta be careful of crossing the street here. Straight forward, yep. Alright. Alright, so last night I ended up staying awake a lot of the night. Uh, mapping out the course and I was doing that using Onyx Off-Road. They have a feature called Route Builder and uh, <clears throat> and basically how it works is uh, I select the starting point on a map and then I can select further down the road and depending on where I put the points I can map out a course or a trail and in this instance the whole Baja 1000 of 2023. It is incredible to have. You can download the areas afterwards and uh, when I'm out of service, but I'm not going to be out of service because I have Starlink. But when I, if I was out of service, I could download the area and have a detailed map of it um, for finding pits and pro probably getting into the race jeep if we had an issue. What's really cool is I can actually hook it to my truck's CarPlay. And uh, right now you can see the purple. That's the chase route that we're following. And the race course I made is red. So right there, that's the race course. This is us. So I'm using it and all of the other chase trucks are using it to help us stay with the race Jeep. We obviously have some communications with the Jeep, but this is definitely a game changer. Another feature so that, not, so that everybody doesn't have to go map the course is I can share that route with them so they can also follow along. Yeah, Google Maps doesn't work in Mexico. Neither does Apple Maps. Apple Maps is actually worse than in Mexico. And that's another reason to use Onyx. Coming up on some left hand turns up here. Okay. All 
Where are you going? Off to your left? Okay. We get on the highway? Yep, a little bit. We clear? Yep. Oh, yeah, we're good. Still 37, I'd assume? Yep, 37. You're up at 40 right now. Go a little lower. 40. Right here? Yep. Look at that, dude. Beautiful. Absolutely. <laughs> You got a hard rate coming up here? Okay. What's that inner rock? Oh no. <laughs> We're gonna build a little heat right there. Where are we at, and Tim? Yeah, 30. 230. This is gonna suck out. Oh, I'm warning you. <laughs> You smell trans fluid? Yeah, I do. You don't have to come out. Okay. I think that side latch probably just came undone. Right. Do you want any zip ties or anything? I think so, yeah. I'll, I'll get some. We're smoking? I don't know if he's just gonna, if it was the wiring harness. I don't know if there was oil fire. If we need to head back there. We see if we can get another there. update from them. See if they yeah. start moving again. We'll give it maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. If the tracker starts, keeps saying zero miles an hour. Messages. Just before we got to this pit, this is the BFG pit one where we were supposed to meet Travis. We just got word that it was a trans line that blew. That's scary. They're a mile marker 87. Um, and we'll see if their little dot starts moving again. Otherwise, we're going to head in and go get them. Live? Yeah, we're good. Good? We got a traffic jam. I can't imagine how they, they, they run this course at 150 miles per hour. <laughs> Keep up, you're going to have rights and lefts here. Those guys all free run a lot. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, they already know it before they get out there. This is blind, right? Yeah, I think so. You're going left. Yep. Yeah, it's going to get a little, it's going to get a little back and forth up here. It's going to get a hard right up here. Another, another right, and straight for a little bit. These are gonna suck out. <laughs> yep. You see it? Go right. Yep. Go right. I 
I think that was the cliff face. Okay. Or one of them. Stay to the left. I think we got fluid and I think we got, I think you're right about the electrical. I mean, it might've burnt up because of, you know, it just might've been the a, a side side effect of the the fire that the electrical started burning. I'm gonna try to fire this thing up real quick. Okay, you might just jump in on your side. Okay. What happened? We definitely have a chance we were learning to pull on out. You guys were freaking cruising. Yeah, we had a good pace going. Well, the jack fell off, didn't hold. Uh, we forgot to strap it down uh, more like we were discussing. So. Yeah, it's gone. That's okay. It's my fault. I should have tied it down a little better. The hood was trying to fly off. Rivets broke out of this side. So we stopped and put a ratchet strap over. We zip tied it first once. We saw that. We saw you. And then we stopped and ratchet strapped. <laughs> we went to the road crossing and we asked the paramedics and we're like, did you go through? And they're like, oh yeah. I'm like oh, a yeah. time ago, like oh, a while ago. ago. I'm like, really? Okay. So then we tried to meet to meet up at the next one, maybe. And you guys were already past that one too. So we were cruising. I mean, he <laughs> yeah. was cruising. We were, yeah. we were working well together. But there was a razor like on the course. We're like, oh crap, we gotta be careful because we're going the wrong way on it. And then this tractor is going four miles an hour pulling this yeah. junked razor yeah. all, like on the race course. Guess it caught on fire under like under here kinda. And then uh it was a transmission line out of the transmission. But they got it fixed, but they noticed another problem. The cross member is cracked and the, like the whole front suspension would fall out if that were to go. So we're contemplating continuing or trying to repair it. We're already so far behind. I thought that I was going to be able to dynamite some of these wolves, dude, and I got put in my place real quick. Yeah. Like it started like side swapping. We about mile 100 right now. You're at 87. 87. So we got more like 70 miles. I got about 40 miles. So fit one. Oh, it's at 120. Yeah. I think it'll do it. Yeah. You have nice to it. Inside, you yeah, it looks like it's along a lot of. I'll probably right. not flying. try to freaking dynamite some big big gloves.
So it looks like we're a little bit off trail. We're going towards the left there. Okay. Is uh is back on the track. Wow, it's a lot easier to see through this visor during the night. Another fire. The header wrap was burning. And the oil uh, still in it. With the oil? Yeah. I had pretty low power feel too, though. Got my fire extinguisher here. Just running for a minute. We kind of burned some of that one out. Yeah. That, like... that header wrap's got a lot of APS in it. It smelled really electrically, but I don't know if it's just that header wrap smells like that. Like uh, light. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you guys got I'm out. Poor low. To go that slow through this stuff. It did smell electrical, though. I know what you. It did. The whole meant. cab was full, like I was like we got an electric fire, but I don't think it is because it kind of smelled like that before too. Like there is a lot of like sand and rocks kind of stacking up the yeah, like, and it's like full of oil and yeah silt the yeah. v-band's acting like a well i don't want to say that's the end but uh we're going to limp it into pit one and kind of just assess what's going on it's not looking great but we'll do what we can We can pull over and let it sit, make sure we don't see smoke. Right? I'm not seeing anything. It's gonna stink for a minute. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything, right? You see anything? No. I see smoke again, do you? Yeah, I kind of smell it. Yeah, I'm smelling it. Look, it's up through it. You blew, on, you blew the trans line again. Did I? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Man, that cross member is falling apart. This uh, <laughs> this looks like a weird spot though, because it's not broken like past the cross member. It's broken off this link right here. It might have popped on my junction. What I put in. Yeah, that's what that's what my guess would be. We can tow you the rest of the way. It's a pretty nice road. It's just long and bumpy. So, so there's a there's a, just a T up here, and then it's a regular road into this little community. Yeah, gonna give you a little bit of recovery wisdom. Shouldn't do a hard pull with it set up like this. For towing people out of something, just flat towing, perfectly fine. You should just flash your lights when you're ready to go and then probably could blind me, I don't really care. Maybe just, yeah, just the low beams. We're not gonna lizard them out. We're gonna get them towed out. Well, I guess it's a good thing we told them to come in. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think this is the end of the show for us? I think mainly just with the time we have left. I don't know if it'll be realistic. We need to try to do something a little bit smaller, more locally, I think. Put it, put put the truck through its paces? Yeah. The fact that you guys got most of it together is, I mean, it's six months. Yeah. You, how could you have known how the, the truck was going to really do? Um, yeah, we were hoping for like a month of shakedown time and we ended up with like three to four shakedown runs. Right that also didn't go as smooth so we remedied everything as good as we could i mean we were going we were going we had a good pace going huh that's the thing i think if we could have kept a, a pace about like we were doing we would have been on a pretty good run honestly i think this is a, the last time we're going to be sitting here probably i'm not ready to give it up i'm not <laughs> really not 
boy, our our sections would have been. We were like in it, yeah. Also, did you hear the first motorcycle crash like three hours ago? Yeah. That's crazy, Price man. Lindsay's getting there too. That's fast. Well, who's that? Is he a car? He's the red bull driver. Oh my god. So like Andy McMillan, I think. Rob so Mack. just a day of racing and they're done. Yeah. Worth every moment. I mean, we got through Mexican desert. Like, Try again next year. It's the only thing I can think of. The trail was amazing. You know, some parts were insanely rough. Um, the locals did lead us wrong on one part of the track. They they like guided us to like like this, and we're like, okay, that's the way. And we went down, and we realized that they were leading us to like really really rough section that was probably <laughs> bypassed. But um, yeah, it turned out all right. By the time we had dropped the skid plate off to fix the trans line, I noticed a small crack in the trans cross member. And by the time the rest of the chase crew showed up we kind of realized that the pinion angle had changed a little so we were questioning a few other things underneath now and kind of did a little further investigation and uh, as far back as we were on time we technically couldn't really make time so we figured we would be better off to pull the plug instead of sending it out with the possibility of it breaking down somewhere way harder to get to. The Jeep drove really well. Um, yeah, if, if it wasn't for the overheating issue, I mean, that the Jeep handles really well, drives really well. And Thank you, Tim. Yeah. You're the man. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Thanks for letting me come along. So this is the part of the trip where we are splitting off with some of our friends and, uh, and the rest of us are going to go to San Felipe to spend the night there. We're honestly about halfway up Baja at this point. We got another five hours. Well, it's uh, the morning after we're quitters. We're going to make our way back up the coast and home. This was a wonderful experience. We'll see what we run into on the way home. Maybe snakes, crocodiles. section of this course that goes on the highway for a bit of it and that was a race car driver on the course racing the Baja 1000 so that's pretty cool we're on the Baja 1000 course right a long night ahead of them. <laughs> yes he does and so do we this ain't no elephant but it's close we're out of gas and when I say we I mean the truck pulling the race car. So I've got an auxiliary tank here, but I don't have a pump. So we're gonna be doing it old fireman style with buckets. You try to dump it from here to there? Yeah. You don't have a hose? <laughs> Stop wasting diesel, that's like 20 cents already, man. <laughs> Having fun? Yeah, Always. yeah. Why Jeep? It's Toyota, don't, they don't break the <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna break something else next time, and you're gonna roll, and then you're gonna do this, and you're never gonna win. You never win against Boston. Put that one in the back corner. You gotta put it. Your valve open. Yeah. Hopefully. All right. See you guys later. Bye.